So we move on to question four. They say a learner standing at the bottom of a building throws a ball, uh, ball A vertically upwards at a speed of 11 meters per second. So I might as well just put in that information, right? So that's 11 meters per second. Okay, and they say, and the ball reaches a maximum height T. They say after 0 0.72 seconds, that's very important, right? Uh, they say another learner standing on the roof of the building throws ball B upwards. Okay, so ball B is also thrown vertically upwards. The two balls reach point T at the same time as shown in the diagram below. Right, so the first thing that they ask us is what is the difference between free fall and projectile motion? Well, it's actually the same thing, right? Uh, this is motion um, of an object under the influence of gravitational force only. Uh, if you wanted to, you could say that free fall is uh, the motion of an object under the influence of gravitational only. Uh, however, projectile motion, it's an object that is given in an initial velocity and moves under the influence of gravitational force only uh, but uh, really in truth it is essentially the same thing right so the first question calculate the time taken by ball a to reach the maximum height at t now note ladies and gents uh, from the ground to get to uh, t we know that the velocity at t should be equal to zero the initial velocity was 11 meters per second Okay, let me just fill that, that in very well, right? And we know that it moves under gravitational acceleration, right? So for 4.2.1, we're going to use an equation of motion, okay? And in this case, note we are, we are looking for time. We've got initial, final velocity, and acceleration. So we can use the first equation, Vf is Vi plus a or g delta t a final velocity is zero. Oh, by the way yeah it's important when you're going to answer questions on a uh, vertical projectile motion please choose a direction as positive i'm going to choose upwards as positive right um and it doesn't matter if you chose downwards uh, as positive not a problem uh, the only thing you need to remember is that, remember now that I've chosen up as positive, it means gravitational acceleration would be negative 9.8 because gravitational acceleration always acts downwards, um, you know, towards the center of the earth, right? So I'm going to say our initial velocity is positive 11 plus negative 9.8. Remember, that's gravitational acceleration and we're looking for time. So I'll take this to the other side. So I've got negative 11, which is equal to negative 9.8 delta T. And now we can divide by negative 9.8. And uh, this is again an, a nice way to uh, actually check if there are no mistakes, right? If you ever get time, uh, you know, as a negative, then it tells you that something is amiss. So that's 11 divided by 9.8. Uh, remember, in this case, the negative divided by a negative, right, would give us a positive. So that's 1.12 seconds. Okay. So the time that ball A takes uh, to get to uh, the maximum height is 1.12 seconds. Right. Now let's go to the next question. They say to us, um, calculate the initial velocity of ball B. Right. Now, I want you to note, ladies and gents, that ball B was thrown one, uh, rather 0 0.72 seconds after ball A. Now, that means that the total time of flight for ball B would be the time, remember, they get to this point simultaneously, right? But in this case, what would have been the time that ball B spent on the A, right? In flight. So it would be the 1.12 seconds minus the 0 0.72. So 
you'd say 1.12 minus 0 0.72. So which means that ball B was in flight for 0 0.4 seconds, right? And now we're looking for the initial velocity. We know its final velocity at this stage will be zero, okay? So again, the very same equation. So for 4.2.1, I have for 4.2.2 rather. So I know that I'm going to say VF, okay? So again, um, that's VF is VI plus G delta T. Our final velocity is zero. We are looking for initial velocity. Gravitational acceleration is negative, right? But now we know the time that it took. We said that's 0 0.4 seconds. Okay, so our initial velocity, right? So we're going to take 9.8 multiplied by 0 0.4 but remember it's going to be negative on the right hand side when we take it to the other side it becomes positive it tells us that we're throwing this object upwards so we get an initial velocity for b of 3.92 meters per second right now they said the initial velocity which means we must also specify direction so this must be upwards okay Right, so that's our initial velocity for B, right? So um, finally, they said calculate the height of the building. So uh, what I'm going to do there is that, uh, remember, the, all right, let's, let's talk about the displacement for ball A. If I took the, displacement for ball A till maximum height and I take the displacement for ball B right till maximum height and I subtract them from each other so which means this displacement here minus that displacement there would actually give me the displacement or rather the height of the building so let's do that let's find out the displacement for ball A Okay, so for 4.2.3, I'm going to find, uh, let's see, so we've got the initial velocity for ball A, actually, yeah, we can, so we can say delta Y, that's VI delta T plus 1 over 2 times A delta T squared. Okay, uh, nothing wrong if you decided to use uh, delta Y, VI plus VF divided by 2 delta T, right? So let's find that displacement. Our initial velocity is 11 meters per second. The time of flight, we found that to be 1.12. One uh, one plus a half times negative 9.8 times 1.12 squared. Okay, so let's find that total displacement there for A. Uh, so that's 1.12, right, minus 0 0.5. So I'm just multiplying by negative there, uh, times 9.8 uh, times 1.12 squared. Okay, so let's do that. So we find our displacement to be 6.17 meters okay so that is the height for ball a but now we find the height for ball b okay so we're going to use exactly the same equation so i'm going to say that's delta y vi delta t plus 1 over 2a delta t squared so the displacement there would be so if you remember for ball b we started at 3.92 but the time of flight for ball b was 0 0.4 that's negative 9.8 times 0 0.4 squared right so now again 
I'm going to do the same thing. So that's 3.92 times 0 0.4. Okay, minus 0 0.5 times 9.8 times 0 0.4 squared. Okay, I hope that you are checking against your own um, calculations there. So delta y for b, so this is for a, this is for b, right? So b was displaced 0 0.78 meters, right? And in this case, now I want you guys to note, so the height of the building would be, that's 6.17 minus 0 0.78. And so let's find that height. So that's 6.17 minus 0 0.78. And I get a height of 5.39 meters. Okay, so please just check there if you do get to the same value. All right, and that is how I would calculate that. Okay, so let's go to the next question. They say to us, the following position time graph is given for the motion of the two balls, right? A and B, as described above. They say study the graphs and answer the questions uh, below. Right, so definitely that is the displacement for A, right? Um, that is uh, on the first graph and the displacement for B. Right, now they say to us, write down the value and unit, right, for X. Now, X would be the maximum height uh, for, uh, for A. We found that to be 6.17. So X would be 6.17. Meters, right? Remember, they said they wanted the unit as well, okay? And y, so y would be the height of the building. Remember, this is where we threw, we started throwing b from, okay? And we found that to be five point, found that to be five point three nine. That's also in meters. And they said Z, so Z would be time, okay? Uh, so this is the time difference between when A was projected and B was projected, right? So if you remember, we said uh, that time was actually 0 0.72. So that's the time delay at 0 0.72 seconds. Okay, and finally, W, that's the total time of flight uh, for uh, ball A. Uh, in fact, not the total time of flight, rather, but the total time until maximum height. That's 1.12. So that's 1.12 seconds. All right, and that is essentially how the cookie crumbles on this question. I hope that you got that. That's out of 19 marks, All right? And I hope if you understood this or you understand this section well, that's an easy nine, 19 marks to obtain. All right, ladies and gents, let's go on to the next question.